So, I have a question for you. Should video games be eligible to win Oscars at the Academy Awards? Now, you might be thinking that that's an absurd question, get over yourself, but let's actually consider that question for a moment. I'd like to preface this video by saying that I went to film school and that I consider myself a filmmaker. However, about two years ago I sat down to play a video game called Alien Isolation, and this game filled a void for me that the movie Prometheus left. It gave me all the right emotional payoffs in just the right places. I was emotionally invested in the main character, Ellen Ripley's daughter, Amanda Ripley, and whether she would ever find out the fate of her mother. I was impressed by this game's attention to detail, its immersive storytelling and world building, its perfect soundtrack. So I find myself asking, why is the video game art debate still a debate? I know this topic has been discussed to death in the past, but I don't think there's ever been a resolution. I don't think there's ever been a definitive, yes, video games are art. As many other internet videos have pointed out, art is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. Should video games be able to win Oscars? I sense that some people would argue that, sure, it's art in the most basic sense, but it will never have the aesthetics and complexities to be high art, and thus shouldn't qualify for Oscars. Though that being said, I'm sure some people would argue that video games don't even qualify as low art. So what is high versus low art? Well, some of the most basic distinctions between the two are that low art is functional, like a craft, while high art involves aesthetic contemplation. Low art is designed specifically for easy mass consumption, while high art is designed more for singular consumption in high circles. Though I don't like this second definition because it works to exclude cinema. The nature of cinema preconditions it to be widely accessible. But I think a safe way of describing high art would be a piece that is highly aesthetic and is able to engage in a deeper artistic and moral and philosophical discussion, while low art is more escapist, functionary, and practical. Now, one way to look at the artistic effort of a video game is to compare it to one mode of cinema, animation. There are numerous different types of animation, hand-drawn, 2D, 3D, motion capture, all regularly used modes in cinema, as well as video games. The background footage you're seeing right now is actually for an upcoming video game called Star Citizen. Many video games not all, but many are becoming more and more like movies, with cinematic cutscenes to help drive the story forward at key plot points. But perhaps more subtly, a lot of movies are becoming more like video games. The way some films are shot, placing the viewer in the middle of the action using visual disorientation, first person videos, the development of immersive 3D experiences, as gimmicky as they are, there's Definitely times when it feels like the lines are getting increasingly blurred. With the continual development of 3D cinema and the development of virtual reality for video games, is it possible that we'll see some form of convergence between the two mediums in the future? I think so, if not already. Some filmmakers are already experimenting with this concept, but that's definitely a topic for another video. No matter how much the lines get blurred, the one thing that traditional cinema will never have, that video games do, is choice. Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic, has a video where he talks about video games and art, and as supportive as he was about video games as an artistic medium, even he was cautious to call video games art, instead acknowledging their potential more than anything. He goes to great lengths to talk about choice and interaction, so I don't want to spend too much time on this topic, but choice places the gamer in the center of the action. It engages the consumer on a level that a blockbuster film could only dream of. As such, video games are not passively consumed like cinema. It is an active process that can place you, yourself, your person, directly in the center of a moral dilemma or philosophical debate or at the center of an epic battlefield in space. It depends on the game. Not all games are created equal. But perhaps comparing video games to other mediums is a pointless endeavor. 
Maybe the fact that it is the only medium that gives the viewer any choice makes it fundamentally different enough to make such comparisons pointless. For example, some critics might point out that, like dance versus gymnastics, one might be considered an art form, while others not so much. Whereas dance is an artistic expression, gymnastics, although very similar to dance, doesn't qualify due to its rigid and competitive nature. The same could be argued with video games and choice. It's a competitive medium, with scoreboards and esports. Counter-Strike, for example, even has world championship competitions with large amounts of money on the line. Perhaps video games are more like sports than art. But there's a problem with this point of view. Not all video games are competitive. Yes, a lot of them are, maybe even most of them, but a lot of them aren't. Many games have a single-player, highly stylized and aesthetic experience. In the Stanley Parable, you explore your mysteriously empty office building, making decisions as the main character to go with or against a narrator, as this whole game revolves around the themes of freedom of choice and will, all the while experimenting with the fourth wall. Inside, a surrealist Danish side-scrolling puzzle game deliberates on questions of consciousness and totalitarianism, which I would also like to point out was supported by the Danish Arts Foundation and, perhaps more interestingly, the Danish Film Institute. Papers, Please is an amazing feat of storytelling and world-building told entirely from the perspective of a border guard of a fictitious communist country constantly presenting you with moral dilemmas. Do you help those in need, saving them from the state by bending the government's rules? Or do you ensure the survival of your own family? Art is expressive. Video games are expressive to increasingly stylized means. We used to see video games with 8-bit graphics because we were working with the technological limitations at the time. Now we're seeing video games with 8-bit style graphics as a deliberate aesthetic decision by the game developer. The same way there's multiple styles of animation, each with different values, these three video games which I listed off the top of my head are radically different from big budget Hollywood-like games such as Battlefield or Call of Duty. And this might point us to the core problem. It might just be a problem of perception. I'm an avid gamer, I can easily point you to games that I see of artistic merits. Inside, Papers, Please, The Stanley Parable, I doubt that the average person, or the type of people who talk about philosophy and art, have ever heard of these titles. What most people know, what most people see on television and the internet, are ads to the latest AAA title coming out later in the year. Battlefield, Call of Duty, the latest shoot 'em up or massively online multiplayer fantasy. The only titles that the average person will see are the ones that don't necessarily qualify as any form of artistic expression. It's purely escapist entertainment. Not all video games are art, but then again, no one's trying to discredit the whole of cinema as an art form by citing a Michael Bay film. Even in the case of these lower video games, some of them are absolute accomplishments in visual fidelity and world building. A game like Battlefield, as much as it caters to the lowest common denominator, looks gorgeous, and let's be honest, I was extremely excited as I got to immerse myself into the Alien universe. breaking the fourth wall and experimenting with narrative techniques, interesting philosophical discussions about freedom and the human condition, moral conundrums, world building, clear parallels with cinema. This is the greatest non-debate ever. The mere existence of these conversations in themselves, the fact that we're debating this already proves my point. It's art. And if you're still not sold on this idea, I'd like to come back to my initial question at the start of this video. Should video games be eligible for Oscars? I mean, you have to admit there's a lot of parallels with cinema, that video games indeed have become vehicles of expression in the past few years. But the reality is that it's already happened. The video game Everything, a quote, playful exercise in existential thinking, won the jury prize at the Vienna Independent Shorts Festival, thus putting it on the Academy Awards long list for best animated short. There's a so, should video games be eligible for Oscars? I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Maybe. Though, that award ceremony is for celebrating movies. You wouldn't expect a painting or a photograph to participate either. But, when people like the late Roger Ebert declare that video games are not art, and never will be, 
or that no person living today will ever see it become an art form, I respectfully disagree.